All right, welcome back, everybody. This is GTM. Uh, today's video tutorial, we're gonna be covering a little bit about blend modes and um, HDRI maps in 3D Max. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, launch up 3D Max here. All right, as you can see, I got a basic scene set up, and uh, let me go ahead and um, Alt W here and go on my perspective. So I'm hitting P. I'm getting out of camera view, so you can see uh, my scene. Basic setup, uh, three point light setup here. And as you can see, we have two, th three spheres and a, uh, our famous teapot here. Anyways, all right, so I got a camera setup here. I'm going to go back to C. As you can see, I'm actually using mental ray lights too. So um, let's go to my light lister. Here's my setup here mental area spots. Uh, one of them set to none. Map sizes are at 512. So I'm going to crank those up really quick. 2048. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and just give this a render and see what we're working with. All right, here's our standard light setup. All right, as you can see, we got some soft shadows going on. All right, um, what we're going to work with is uh, blend modes here, and blend modes are basically mixing two shaders together as to where previous lessons or video tutorials I was covering mix maps how we were mixing two textures together so this is basically uh, taking mix maps and textures that are built on shaders and um, you know mixing those shaders with grunge maps or mix maps as well alright so for example let's uh we'll start off with something simple here I'm gonna hit my M key to get to my material and right here, one of these blank shaders here. I'm going to go ahead and um, click standard, and we're going to close out everything here. Let me see. We are going to go to blend modes right here. So I'm going to double click that. And it says keep old sub material, which is fine. All right, so now we have two shaders that we can work with. So, for example, the first one, I'm going to go ahead and. Um, grab like a, a ray trace material more like a reflective uh, you know reflective material here so I'm gonna go to my first uh, material slot here and I'm gonna click standard and I do have some uh, ray trace materials here these are some of the older ones from max and I'm gonna go with a, like a, a gloss black all right so I'm gonna double click on this and as you can see there's my gloss black shader which is pretty good for car paints or anything that's basically uh, I don't know glossy <laughs> alright anyways I'm gonna come back now the second shader I'm gonna click on is um, we're gonna make this color uh, a white gloss so now as you can see I have my first slot is a white gloss shader second or first slot is a black gloss shader and then a white gloss in my second so Try to jump back and forth here. I believe this should show up um, the gloss, I suppose. I don't know why sometimes that doesn't react right. Anyway, so let me just go ahead and um, drop that shader right on here. All right, as you can see, the white one's showing. If I go back here, that's the black one. There we go. So the white second slot is white, first slot is black. So if I render this out. As you can see, it's just a black, you know, a black gloss reflective material. All right, now the whole goal is with blend modes, we are taking two shaders and then revealing one shader underneath the other, kind of like a mix map. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop this, cancel. All right, so in my masking mode, or right here, my masking slot, I'm just going to go ahead and grab me a basic black and white map. For example, this checker map. So, the whole thing is whatever's white shows through, which is the second shader color, and black holds back. So, I'm going to double click. And then, as you can see, you know, it mixes the two gloss shaders together. All right. So, now of course, if I were to render that out, you know, you would we would see the two shaders mixed. All right. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. We're going to use something more of a complex, not a complex map, but something a little more interesting. So instead of that checker map, 
in the masking area, I'm going to change it to a bitmap, and I have an 8-ball texture. So if I were to open that up, not an 8-ball texture, but I'm using the 8-ball as a masking map. So now, if I drop that on there, and of course I'm going through my parent level, so I'm dragging it right on here. And if I were to reveal the, you know, the actual map here, let's grab our full ball here. And I'm just going to throw like a, a simple UV map on it. UV map, and you know what, we'll just keep it something like that. Even though it's got the back side on it, that's alright, because I'm not unwrapping this one at all. Alright, so I'll just hide that like that. And let's just go ahead and render this out. And then as you can see, alright, so now we have the 8-ball texture. But what it truly is we're doing is revealing the white gloss under the black. Alright, so if I were to actually just switch the colors around, you would see how this takes effect. Alright, so let's go ahead and cancel that off. Alright. So now I'm going to go back to my material key and go back to my original shader. So instead of the black shader here, let's switch it to maybe like, how about we'll do something a little different. Like maybe this gemstone, right? So now you can see we have the gemstone being revealed through. And then maybe the second shader, I'll change this to, hmm, let's see. I don't know. We'll use the we'll use this brush metal here. All right, so let's give that a render and see what happens here. As you can see now, we have the gemstone being you know held back, and showing through is the chrome or it's like the brush metal. You know, held back by the black eight and the black on the actual texture itself. All right, I guess if that made any sense, let's try maybe a couple other shaders here. So I'm gonna change those shaders again, going back to my parent level. So I'll click on that, and we're gonna change the shader to say like a. Let's go to some different ray trace materials I have here. Let's go to like a gloss blue. And then the second one will switch to how about a gloss green. So as you can see, that's what's revealing. Now, look at on the lines of what if you were unwrapping a vehicle like a car and you wanted to reveal the decals. So you would paint in your decals and then mask them out with black and white maps to reveal them. So for example, let's go to like a 3D total here or something. We'll find some some renders. Sorry. Might as well that render out here. Alright, so I'm just throwing up a 3D total, which is a great site. And let's just go look at some of these um, tutorials here. We can go to like 3D Max. And we'll look at some of the completed, maybe, completed projects here. And hopefully I can come across a, a vehicle that has a lot of masking maps. Probably put on a maybe, this one right here. Actually, this is where I learned it from. Modeling the Nissan 390GT. I probably did this tutorial about seven, eight years ago, nine years ago, maybe. But yeah, he uh, basically, if you look through here, when he gets to his texturing, at least maybe if I can find it. Oh, I believe it's on the second. He has two parts of this. Let's see if we can find the second version. Uh, right here, texture and yeah, texturing and the lighting. So we'll go to painting and applicating applications of textures. Alright, as you can see, uh, let's go to page four, maybe. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, maybe that's right.
Okay, see right here. He has this black masking of his text, which is going to reveal a different color. And let's see. See here, he has the number 22. And then, of course, see he's revealing white text under it. So it's a white kind of shader, so it's revealing. Same with the, if you see here, the black masking. Or it could be reverse white, depends on what you're doing, what shader you're revealing. He's revealing that Japanese decal right there. All right, so uh, that's basically the you know the basic lines of it, I suppose. Um, hopefully that somewhat makes a little bit of sense. So for example, if I were to take a you know a new map here, and I'm just gonna paint one, I'm gonna make this a black and white map. And I'm going to paint me, let's see, let me grab some random texture here, or paint, custom paint right here, for example, I'm going to paint this in white. So that, here, I'll do a couple more, we'll just make it a little more interesting. Alright, so this will be my new masking map, and if I save this out... Call this uh, sci-fi mask, I guess. If that makes any sense. All right, and if I were to use this one as my masking map, I'm going back to 3D Max here, and we're gonna switch. Go back to my M key. I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna switch our masking map right in here. So I'm going back to the mask and load the new one I created which is the sci-fi mask all right then as you can see um, like that interactive Let's see if we can actually reveal that there we go and maybe I can use maybe a box texture on it. okay that's cool enough all right so if I render that out obviously that's reveal whatever is being masked out between the two shaders. Alright, so hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, I want to go ahead and stop this, close this out. And for now, what I'm going to do is actually keep this shader at a, uh, you know, let's go black. I want to go with uh, chrome black. Not chrome black, gloss black. And then the second one, we'll keep it white gloss white and then let's change our masking map back to our eight ball here i'm going to load that bitmap and throw that in and i believe this should show up and we're going to take that back to a planner there we go all right so i'm going to render that out and we'll take this another level now or another step i should say Alright, so as this is working, rendering, jeez. Probably because I got my slot shadows to times one default. And plus, I'm core rendering H HD, so that's going to take a second. Alright, so let me finish this render and I'm going to stop the recording and then we're going to continue on. Plus, I got a phone call. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take this another step here. So I'm gonna do a different process, but still work with my blend modes. Right, I'm gonna close that out, I'm gonna hit my material key. All right, this time, when I grab a shader, I'm gonna change my shader to, uh, I'm gonna go blend mode. I'm gonna keep old sub material. Now, of course, these are two slots for shaders, but let's also put mix maps within the shader. So for example, I'm gonna grab a black shader here so I'll go standard and I'll use one of my ray trays and we'll go gloss black. Alright, now within this gloss black shader, I'm going to go ahead and put a mix map. So now I'm able to mix two materials. So I'm going to click on my mix map. First one, I'm going to probably go ahead and put my black 8 ball texture in here. That will still give me the gloss look, as you can see. 
even though I actually put the texture in, since it was a black and white mask anyway, or, you know, image anyway, excuse me, texture anyways. All right, so now the second one I'm actually going to, you know, let's put in, um, I'm just going to put some random grunge style texture. I guess I can go with maybe, uh, how about these, looks like, I don't want to say worn metal, but I guess I could use this white grunge. Maybe like we're going to reveal something, you know, maybe like the paint's been chipped away from the ball. So we're going to reveal that, that white texture through this gloss black. All right, so now I'm going to actually use the mix amount and let's probably use our scratches here. All right, and as you can see, now we're starting to reveal that white through that gloss black and we got some scratches now. Now that is on one shader. So now if I decide to take it another step, let's get another shader here. And you know what, I'm just gonna go, let's go with our standard uh, gloss white on this one. Since we went gloss black on the other one. And you know what, I'll just use the same masking map. Actually, you know what, maybe I'll do something a little bit different. Maybe we'll use him. I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out, but you know, now as you can see, we're getting it really damaged up here. Uh, maybe that's a little too much grunge, so I'll go back and use the same scratch. Alright, so let's see how this turns out. And I'm going to come back, let's see, in our, I believe this white slot here. No, not a white slot, but the black slot where our black shader shader was. I'm going to go to the maps and in the bump slot I'm going to actually put that same scratch bitmap. We're trying to reel some damage here but we're going to reverse it so instead of minus or 30 plus here I'm going to go let's say minus 10. There we go. Looks like we got some damage. We can even go less. Let's have a minus 5. All right, there we go. Now we got this kind of damaged up ball here. I'm going to go ahead and render that out and see how it turned out. And that's the idea behind, you know, using blend modes. Oops, I dragged the shader on there. I do apologize. Let's go back to our materials. And I'm going to drag that right onto here. And we should just reveal that. I'm sure if the mask was there, it should show up. So when I render it out, now we should have like a damaged looking ball that's revealing other shaders along with mix maps. And there we go. Alright. So that's uh, basically how that works. You know, your blend modes, you can actually take full shaders with mix maps in them, with gloss, reflective, ray trace materials, and then mix those two shaders together. It can get pretty complex but uh, puts a little time and effort into it. You get some pretty good results. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's drop in a, another blend mode uh, with this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see. I'm gonna go, I'll pick a new shader. Go standard, we're gonna make this a blend mode. Keep all some material. And then in the first one, I wanna find me a glossy material. And let's just go with, uh, we can go with any color, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go with orange. Because even though I'm going to just place the texture over it, I just want the gloss reflection attributes, that's all. So, in the first slot here, in the bitmap section, I am going to look for bitmap, and we're going to go with our one ball here. Open that texture up. As you can see, we have our one ball. All right, now within here, the second slot, I'm going to go ahead with go with the gloss white. All right. And then, of course, with my mask, basic standard, we'll go with the, we'll go with the scratches as well here. And then, as you can see, we got our scratches right on our one ball. But I'm also going to use those scratches. And the map slot for let's go with the yellow ball, you know, or at least the main texture here. 
So that is the main shader right here. We are putting a bump map and we're going to use that same scratch texture. Of course, you can really mix them up if you'd like. All right, so now, but I'm going to, of course, I'm going to reverse that to maybe like a minus two. There we go. So now we got some scratch worn paint on our ball. And I'm just going to drag that right onto. That, that sounds fine and let's go ahead and see how that turns out let's make that interactive whoops turn these on there we go all right and then I'm just gonna reposition that just like that and let's go ahead and give that a render Alright, things are looking pretty good. Now, I guess, just to make the scene somewhat come alive, let's go ahead and um, do another blend mode. And I'll use these ones that I already created here. Or actually, I'll, go, I'll start new. So I'll go standard, blend mode, keep old sub material. So the first one we're going to do is go with a gloss white. This is going to be my cue ball here. Alright, so then the second one, let's go with, um, I don't know, let's go with a, ch -ch -ch -ch. let's use this regular bitmap here. I didn't put a shader in there, but I'm going with a bitmap and with this white grunge. This is going to like reveal the dented underside of that cue ball, I suppose. And then of course under the masking map here we will use let's use this guy I don't know how much damage that's gonna look there you go that looks like a pretty worn out cue ball alright and then um, I'm gonna take that same grunge texture in here and drop it into my bump map I think it goes in this one let's double check so I'm gonna go bitmap and we're going with that grunge texture and this ooh, that's a lot but bring it down let's go minus one I guess that looks pretty good maybe we can go one that looks fine let's give that a test you know we could possibly mix that with another nah, I think it's fine let's just give this uh, let's just drop this right on here all right and give that a render test it out You know, we could probably damage a little bit more. I mean, I guess that looks, no, that actually looks pretty good. All right, the next step we're gonna do is actually work with, uh, so that's, you know, basically you understand, hopefully you understand a little bit about blend modes. That's mixing the two shaders. Um, what we're gonna do now is, uh, we're gonna actually work with some HDRI imaging now to make this kind of come alive. All right, we're gonna go ahead and continue now. We're gonna start working with a little bit of uh, some HDRI images. Now, what exactly are HDRI images? Hmm, to be honest, I'm not an expert on them. From what I do remember and do and have done research on them, what I do know is um, there's some type of high dynamic range image basically using like the exposures of your lights and dark areas to kind of simulate real world I guess feel or real world look that would be exposed onto reflections. So, for example, like these images here. Um, I don't know if I really explained that too well. To be honest, I'm not like uh, not like a master at it or anything. Uh, from what I do understand, though, is um, uh, a lot of 3D artists will use that high dynamic range image to reflect and warp around or ray trace or you know reflect the materials to give it that really high contrasted reflective look that makes things pop out and kind of give it a realistic you know photorealistic render and these are all 3d images here that have been used that have high dynamic range images used on them 
Now, how do you make them? I don't. To be honest, I've never made one myself, but I've seen and read of methods where people will actually buy chrome balls or like use Christmas balls. For example, you know, here are some Christmas balls. You can actually hang those up and then take a camera and actually uh, take the reflective shot of the chrome ball and that would work as an HDR image. As you can see here are some examples and eventually you just either unwrap the image or just you know basically use it. Like I said I've never technically done it myself but uh, from what I understand it, it works pretty well. Now I know there's sites where you can actually purchase those chrome balls and as you can see um, here's someone using it for a class exercise. Uh, you just kinda prop it up, take an image and then you know with your camera and then pop. I guess you should be able to use it. Well what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I got a couple of HDR images already saved. Now you can find them around online but I ain't gonna lie they're pretty tough to come by sometimes. But if you have any good sites that you know of please feel free to link them on this YouTube channel if you happen to come across this. Uh, I would like to, you know, basically if I could, I'd find more sites I can share with my students as well as myself. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, test out this HDRI and see how it works. So I'm going to go back to uh, 3D Max here. And this is one way that I've learned. And like I said, I've went through plenty of sites throughout my time. And I can also say there wasn't really one that was just a definite you know like the the bible for hdri i just know uh, this methods work for me i suppose um so what i'm gonna do is uh i'm gonna grab an hdri image and put it in my environment slot so before we do that let's throw a couple of uh let's throw a couple of uh chrome textures down so i'm actually gonna grab a blank shader here go to standard here and then i'm gonna use one of my ray trace and i'm gonna use this chrome white texture I'm just going to drag that right onto the teapot. Oops, let me close that out. I was trying to drag it on the render. Let me drag it on this teapot here. And let's go ahead and give that a quick render and see what we have. All right, as you can see, we got a pretty good render. It's a chrome reflective material that's kind of rendering out you know, our environment, which is wrapping around everything. All right, so what I'm going to do now is actually place an HDR image in the background, and which is going to warp our image all around our reflective, you know, teapot and our pull balls here. All right, so I'm going to hit my, uh, not my M key, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to my environment slot. So I'm going to go render environment. And right here in the environment map, we're going to throw an HDRI map in there. So I'm going to go to bitmap. And then I'm going to look for my HDR maps, which I have a few here. So I'm going to actually grab one of these two. And let's go to all, let's go to HDRI. All right, there we go. So if you see if when I click on them, this is like the chrome ball that's been unwrapped. Um, they can use either one of these. I'm going to prefer to use the dome sphere, the dome style one. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, the sky dome, I should say. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. As you can see, we get these HDRI load settings, and normally what you want to do is, um, let's turn that off. You want to get your uh, white points out, so you don't want any of the pink in there. So make sure that's okay. But what, I, what I've been doing lately now is I've been copying this number here. And I'm going to go to the real pixels, 32, and click on definite exposure. I'm going to press OK. And from there, I'm actually going to click and drag this into a blank shader. Make it an instance. And with that number I created or copied, I'm going to go to my output mode. And we are going to put it in the RGB slot. I'm just going to paste that in there. Hit enter. This should pop this out. Expose it a lot more. Now, instead of using screen, as my mapping, I'm going to go to spherical environment. As you can see, it kind of wraps it around. And if you were to see this out of camera view, this is what you're, exactly what you're seeing. So I'm going to key, zoom out of my scene. So what you're seeing when I render this is 
the HDRI image in the back. But since we built one of these, uh, you know, uh, basically a platform here that we're rendering everything up, we're not going to see the background because it's being hidden out. So I'm actually going to go back to my camera view. When we render this now, you're going to see the actual HDRI image being warped around our geometry. Hopefully that's a little sense, but that looks pretty cool. All right, and that's how you do that. Or at least one way I've learned. So now you can see we got this kind of high dynamic range image that's warping around and popping out our, basically our gloss, or not our gloss, but a reflective geometry here. All right, so that looks pretty good. Pretty neat. Now, like I said, there's different types of HDR images. We can try one more. I do kind of like this one, though, but let's try another one. So I'll go M. Let's go to my environment slot. We'll switch it to actually. Let's try the second set. I have another HDR image here, and we're going to use this one. I'm going to open that up. And let's go ahead and bring the white point back. So I'm going to go back to the 8 bit channel. Bring this back. Oops, actually, it's my 16 bit channel. There we go. I'm going to copy this number. And I'm always making sure that, you know, my guide is right past the graph out on the outside. I'm going to go back to real pixels and definite exposure. Ooh, that just doesn't look right. It looks a little too exposed. Let me bring this down. Alright, that looks pretty good. Well, I guess we can. I don't know. Let's try that out. And we'll go 16 bit. We'll just copy this right here. All right, I'm gonna press OK. We're gonna drag that into a new shader, make it an instance, and we're gonna take that number that we uh, copied and drop it right there in the RGB level. Paste it in. Hit Enter. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and use that as our HDRI and you can see that's what's being reflected now oh and plus we're supposed to turn it not to screen let's make sure this is set to I'm gonna use spherical you can try other ones shrink wrap spherical just wouldn't lay screen down because that just kind of overlays the image so there we go pretty good Alright, but you know what? I am going to go back to the original one. I just kind of like that look better. So let's do one last uh, switch of the HDRI. And we're going to actually copy this one back over to this. Make an instance, and that should replace our image. There we go. Looking pretty good. Now, our last few steps is. Sorry, I'm yawning here. Our last few steps are uh, let's go ahead and throw a full table texture down and render out our ambient pass and combine the two. Alright, things are looking pretty good. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to grab another shader here and I'm just going to. In the diffuse slot, we're gonna go and grab us. I believe I have. Pull table texture. I'm gonna turn that on my map slot, and I'm just gonna drag that right on here. And then, of course, I'm gonna throw a UV map. Let's just box it out. I said, whoop, wrong one, wrong one. Let me make sure I'm on the actual set. UV map, let's box it out I suppose. And you know what? I'm just gonna tile this up, say I'm gonna say 20 by 20. Alright, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna actually use that as a bump map as well. So and a speckler. I'm just gonna kinda do a quick and dirty version of it. Let me hit my M key. So in my map slot, let's just go ahead and um throw in the specular and just copy it over. I wouldn't highly recommend it doing this way, but I'm just doing this for the, the lecture here. And a bump map. 
and we'll probably bring that bump down. I don't know. Let's try five. I guess that looks okay. All right, let's give this a test render. And then the last step I'm gonna do is actually, let's get this rendered out here, is render out my ambient occlusion and combine the two. When there's that, I'll save it out. That's what I get for rendering out these HD, uh, uh, HD images. Alright, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and save that out. I'm gonna save this out as my diffuse uh, render. I'll save it over the old one. I'll save this as a PNG as well. Alright, so save that over and what we're gonna do is close this out and then I'm gonna render my ambient occlusion path. Alright, let's go ahead and get our ambient pass. I'm gonna go to M. Oops. Let me hit my M key. Uh, let's grab uh, any blank shader here. We're gonna make this a mental ray shader. Now remember, I'm already in mental ray render, so let hit. Whoops. Let's see. M. I believe my. Whoops. My mental ray is probably. Uh, where am I at? Autodesk main material. No materials. Mental ray. Down here, let's see. There's my mental ray render right here in the surface slot. We're gonna look for our AO ambient of reflective occlusion. I'm gonna change this to 64 for now. You know what? And my max distance, I think I'm gonna try at least 100 right off the bat. Um, I wonder what that reflective does. <laughs> I'm gonna try it out anyway. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my render setup. And we're gonna go change this to one. Whoops. One, I'm just gonna use 64. Mitchell. And then in the processing tab, make sure we're at the parent level and call this our AO pass. I'm gonna enable this material override and just gonna drag that right over there. This should work. There you go, and then we'll just render this out. Looks like we got a pretty good decent AO pass. I'm not sure what I'll turn off that reflective. I think that's jacking that up. That's what I get for being curious. Turn this off. Let me go ahead and render that out. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, I'll see you next year. Anyways, while that's rendering, I suppose I can, uh, hmm, let's close some of this stuff out. Let's go back to max. It's almost there. I'm actually going to take this into Photoshop now and just composite it. So let me go ahead and open up Photoshop while this is rendering out. Oh shit, are you? Whoops, excuse my language. Looks like I'm gonna open up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my uh, diffuse render here that we have. Somewhere here. Okay, here's my diffuse. All right. Let's make sure this is, uh, it's almost rendered. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and save this out, and this is my AO pass. Save it over the old one. Oops. Let me make sure. 
We saved it as a PNG, just in case. There we go. AO pass, save it. I'm gonna save it over the old one. All right, so I'm gonna open that up in Photoshop. There is my diffuse pass. I'm gonna go file, open, get my AO pass, and we're just gonna hold down, I'm gonna grab our image, hold down shift, so it dropped it right on top. And let's uh, try multiply first. Maybe bring this down to 75. There we go, or you can try overlay. Yeah, it usually lightens it up a little bit. Maybe possibly bring this down a little bit more. Maybe to 50, that works just as well. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do here is actually, let's go ahead and, um, I'm gonna actually put a diffuse. Let me go ahead and combine these. I'm gonna, in fact, you know what? Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna control E. And I'm gonna throw a filter on here, filter gallery. And we're gonna put a, a nice, um, Let's, let's make sure we switch these two colors. I need the black on top and the white. We're going to put a diffuse on it. so That way we can blow out our whites a little bit, as you can see. Uh, watch when I tone that up. You can see our whites getting blown out just a bit. But I'm going to bring the clear amount. Just because I want a little bit of a glow. Alright, that looks pretty good. And... Uh, I guess we can always add a little noise on there if we want. Just add some noise. Let me go Gaussian. I don't want nothing crazy, but you know, maybe something a little bit there. Let's try like a three. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe let me control Z out of that. Let me do one more noise filter, artistic, book noise, add noise. We'll go like a two. Alright, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and save this out. And there we go. We have our ambient occlusion pass mixed in with our diffuse render to give us our soft shadows. So I'm going to image resize this. I'm going to say about a thousand because I'm going to post this up on the forums here. Alright, hopefully you learned a little bit about HDR imaging. And I will catch you. Let's say this is a JPEG. I'll call this HDR Images One. All right, and I'll catch you next. Uh